For this problem, we're going to apply Gauss's law to find the electric field due to a solid insulating sphere. The radius of the sphere will be capital R, and we want the field first for a point outside the sphere, here. So we want E here. If it's an insulating sphere, it means the charge is distributed uniformly throughout the entire volume. Now, in order to apply Gauss's law, we have to have a, a very symmetric situation, and in this case, a sphere is highly symmetric. So, we need a Gaussian surface, and the Gaussian surface we draw through the point where we want the electric field, and we'll let the radius of that Gaussian surface be small r, where r is a variable. So the working form now of Gauss's law is that the magnitude of the electric field is equal to the charge inside the Gaussian surface over the, uh, over the area of the Gaussian surface times epsilon naught. So in this case, the charge inside our Gaussian surface is the entire charge of the sphere. So it's just Q. The area of that spherical Gaussian surface is 4 pi r squared epsilon naught. And so this can just be written as kq over r squared. This is for r greater than the radius of the sphere, and we see that the sphere acts like a point charge. Okay, let's now go inside the sphere. Okay, so if I want the, the electric field here, inside the sphere, I have to draw my Gaussian surface through that point. So I'll draw a Gaussian surface inside here. And the amount of charge inside our Gaussian surface is now what goes into the formula for the electric field. So this will be Q in. And we can see that it is not the entire charge of that sphere, but something less. So in order to find how much charge is inside our smaller Gaussian surface, we'll use volume charge density, rho, which is defined to be charge divided by volume. And this is a uniform or constant value. So for the whole sphere, we take the total charge over the total volume. But since that's a, a uniform charge density, that will also be the charge inside our Gaussian surface over the volume of our Gaussian surface, which is now proportional to r, little r cubed. Solving for Q in, we see then it is Q times the ratio of the radius of the Gaussian surface over the radius of the whole sphere cubed. Okay, now we can put that into Gauss's law. So for R less than the radius of the sphere, we see that E, same formula, Q in over A epsilon naught. Q in now is Q, little r cubed over big R cubed. Now the area is still the area of the Gaussian surface, so it's 4 pi small r squared epsilon naught. And this becomes q times r over 4 pi epsilon naught r cubed, or kqr over r cubed. Remember, capital R is a constant, small r is a variable. So for radii less than the radius of the sphere, in other words, inside the sphere, E is proportional to R. It's a linear function. Okay, so at the center it's zero, zero, and it gets bigger linearly as you move towards the edge of the sphere. If we were to graph this quantity, the electric field versus R, the distance from the center of the sphere, and we'll mark the edge of the sphere, radius capital R. First part of the function would be linear, and then once you hit the edge it acts like a point charge and drops off as 1 over R squared. The graph does join up at this point at little r equals capital R, and that value would be KQ over capital R squared. So there's an example of using Gauss's law for an insulating sphere.